recording started. Yeah, the only thing that in between, I want to jump to a website. Uh, so yeah, if somewhere you can help me share the screen, and that would be great. Or I can you can you can just click share screen and it'll take over. So okay, that's uh, that's brilliant. Okay, yeah. So I will give a little bit of an insight in terms of the Latin American uh, uh, pollen database that I've been working on since uh, some time uh, now. Um, I am uh, at the University of Bergen in Norway, and uh, and I'm mostly going to show some things that I've been involved in in a, in a project that is still ongoing that I'm not a part of anymore. But there are some things that have to do with Latin American pollen database, so I thought in kind of sharing that. So yeah, next. So in terms of uh, data volume, what we have of Latin America, we have uh, 230 sites. So it's a pretty uh, a spatial coverage that uh, that has been uh, developing over the last uh, uh, decade. But especially the last few years, there's not necessarily have been a lot of uh, new sites. We had uh, 11 new sites. We have some some new data sets. But um, it, it has been a slow progress over the last uh, few years. Um, however, during my PhD, yeah, that's good. You can go to the next one. Yeah, during my PhD, I did a literature review. And uh, in this literature review, what I basically did was uh, check on all the kind of different uh, modern pollen records or fossil pollen records that would uh, that actually exist in Latin America. So this was basically a metadata review. So on the left, you see all the, the, the lo localities that are from uh, modern, that have modern samples. And on the right, uh, all the fossil pollen records and that they can be 500 years or 5,000 years or a million years. We have some very long fossil pollen records in Latin America. So based on, on this, it was pretty clear that, that there was a lot of uh, fossil pollen uh, uh, research going on in uh, Latin America. Uh, identifying more than 1,600 uh, uh, records. So uh, based on this, yeah, go to the next. Based on, on this and uh, part of the project that I've been uh, part of, which is uh, HOPE, which stands for Humans on Planet Earth. Uh, we did a, uh, I did a review of uh, 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 Holocene records and especially the ones that could potentially be most interesting also for a, a larger number of people in this case. Uh, that have uh, not like big hiatuses, in this case, that is older than 6,000 years and younger than 1,000 years, that have at least three uh, chronology control points, and that we could have access to published work for metadata information. So in this case, it could be Spanish or Portuguese, English, pieces, journals, whatever, uh, the review that was uh, that was done in literature. So um, that's that was like a first selection that we did, and then go to the next. So then in the end of 2020, what I did, I reached out to 170 researchers to be part of uh, manuscripts. And we kind of point this as the Latin American synthesis of policy and vegetation change. And, uh, and in the end, there were 67 researchers that provided uh, 123 new data sets. Um, and these data sets were all meant to be part of this, um, this manuscript as such. Yeah, go to the next. So from these 123, some of them will, will maintain private private, uh, but these data sets, uh, there's 70 of these that can be go that can go to, to, to Tilia. So many of them, them have already been prepared in terms of uh, all the metadata formatting and, uh, and the taxonomic check. But there's the final steps that need to do, for example, updating the chronologies, age models, and, and do a final taxonomy check. So mo most of them are basically already ready. The reason why they didn't get updated yet, that in the meantime, we were also working on uh, preparing the manuscripts uh, before they would get uploaded. So that was kind of part of the negotiation that went on that with, uh, with the researchers. Yeah, go to the next. So what's coming up next is the stewarding in this year for me is, of course, these uh, 70 data sets uh, is the big push that we want to do to Neotoma. But in parallel, what I've been working on is to update the Latin American harmonization table of fossil pollen records. So there was a previous version in a paper that was published some, some years ago, but this updated version is based on the, the latest data set of fossil pollen records with all the new stuff and also the private 
So it's a it's a quite a substantial uh, large table that we want to just uh, uh, make available uh, over the course of the of the next month, basically. The other thing is that uh, I will talk a little bit more about that is that uh, I've been also working on this uh, package, which is called R Fossil Paul, which is basically sourcing neotoma and then uh, doing the cleaning and the filtering and the age modeling and the processing and support, which is uh, which is uh, going to publish soon. And I want to have that one as well as uh, in Spanish. And at the same time, also kind of reactivate the website and the Twitter and make a little bit more of a of a momentum around it again. Yeah, go next. So uh, I'm sure that we will have more than 100 co-authors on this Latin American synthesis uh, manuscript, uh, both people or the people that have been collaborators in the research part and also as a data contributors, basically everyone everyone that has shared private data and also the people that we have data from from Neotoma uh, are offered co-authorship. So we're not to prioritizing people that keep their data private, but basically everyone from whom we're using data is offered uh, co-authorship. Yeah, go next. Uh, and the other thing that I've been working on is uh, human indicators because that was kind of part of my project. So um, over the course of the next months, we're also publishing a list of all human indicators uh, detected in fossil palm records in Latin America. So this was basically reviewing literature and just uh, describing and listing all the different human indicators uh, as uh, as polycologists or polynologists in South America have been have been mentioning. So that's just that's alongside the Latin American conversation table. This is also a table that we're just making available and then people can do uh, their analysis on it if they have exactly the these kind of uh, uh, taxa that they find. In combination with the harmonization table, we hope that that kind of facilitates the push of identifying human impact in, uh, in Latin America. Yeah. And then specifically linking also to what, to what Jack said, um, this Latin American to say analysis has been part of a different kind of project with different emphasis on specifically uh, human impact, but I'm very much interested in establishing basically an own project with larger funding that is uh, for Latin American fossil pollen research. So in my case, aiming for the Norwegian Research Council or the, the bigger grants in, in Horizon, I'm, that's something that's very much uh, on, my, on my radar. So yeah, go next. So this is a little bit of a, of a sneak uh, a preview of what we've been doing. So on the left, you see like the, the 100, 150 plus uh, records that we have from, from the Holocene from, uh, from Latin America. And the things that we're looking into is uh, the similarity and dissimilarity between all these different records. And also looking into temporal trends in terms of uh, rate of change, in terms of the, the, the synchronicity in changes. But this is one thing that I've been looking into is how, how are the fossil pollen records spatially organized and how we can map that out visually in a way that we did here on the on the right. So this we're 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 testing a number of different different techniques. And uh, and we've had the, the opportunity here to uh, to use the different methods that have been uh, used in 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 hope. Um, but now on a on a very diverse uh, data set that we're looking into for for Latin America. So it's a little bit of a sneak preview because the thing that we are actually encountering is that it's such a diverse uh, continent in all way that uh, there's very little synchronicity or similar patterns that we're picking up on. So so finding no patterns is uh, something that we are uh, that we're interested in uh, in describing right now. So it's all work in process, but. I just thought I'm giving you a sneak preview and I also want to give the heads up to Andra Mottel in, in the team here in Bergen who has done a lot of work on this. So yeah, go next. So a little bit of like the, the, the final steps of in terms of the needs and wants that was kind of asked as a, as a, as a pinpoint to discuss. So yeah, we have these 70 fossil pollen data sets. I have some challenging taxonomy, and it's not always very clear how to place these in the taxonomic backbone as Neil Thoma has it right now. So uh, I've been kind of communicating with people, but I'm um, also kind of here posing the question if uh, if uh, if the Slack is the way to go. We, we've had some some discussions, but maybe it's uh, it's uh, it's um, an extra help that I need there. Yeah, go ahead. 
And the other thing is that we have this new package, which is called our, our fossil poll. And uh, and our Latin American synthesis paper is very much very much leaning on this on this package in terms of the sourcing and using neotoma to do all the cleaning and then analysis. Yeah, go next. So this is something that soon will be accepted, will be out. Uh, but one thing that is very important to us and also for the follow up packages that we're working on is that we, we keep very much kind of close informed about any changes that is happening in, in Neotoma, either in documentation or the path, because we're leaning so much on streamlining everything with Neotoma. And we have some more also pollen packages upcoming. So that's something important to do. And of course, if people want to if, you know, play around with the package, it will be very useful. And, uh, and perhaps a teasing thought is that we would like to think that this is for fossil pollen initially developed, but it, I think we think we has a, has a lot of potential to also use uh, use it for other uh, proxies. So uh, yeah, so this is a in a nutshell the thing that I, that that we've been working on for Latin America. And if you have any questions, then uh, then I will be happy to answer them. Did Did you want to share your screen? No, I I thought I'm not doing the twisting and changing, so I just extended my presentation a bit. <laughs> okay. Stop my share.